hugging us, my wife and I and the members of our team. Don't go, don't go. They were going to kill you there, Daddy. Say, oh, no, they won't. I will live to the day he wants. If I live, I live for him. If I die, I die for him. If I live, if I die, I belong to the Lord. Then I went up to the room and I pick it up. Joshua and Catherine's clothes and their pillow and I smell of their pillow you know because you know that when the kids are small they have a nice smell right here and I smell and I say Lord I want to go back alive yo quiero regresar vivo and the Lord gave me a script in Joshua 1 3 no one shall resist you in the days of your life as I was with Moses I will be with you I will not leave you I will not forsake you be courageous be a man be courageous do not dismay because I will be with you wherever you be, wherever you go, I will be there with you. Convictions. Convicción y valentía es eso que tú tienes adentro de ti. Es esta unción que el Señor viene a ti y te da para predicar la palabra en cualquier lugar. Es this anointing, es this conviction that He gives you to preach. As a matter of fact, we used to say my ministry or, 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 or my church or my this, this is not ours. The gift is not ours. The call is not ours. The power is not ours. The anointing is not ours. What do you have? You have nothing. You have the voice. And if he's a man of you, he can take you the voice with his call that's outside. I believe that God's call to the ministry. He gives you the capacity. He sends you. And he provides for you. I was a young 19 to 20 years old when I finished Bible school and I went to Spain. My father always said, finish your school. Finish your medicine school. I said, no. He still waited. I said, by the millennium, I will be back. Yo voy a regresar al millennium. Para el millennium, yo regreso. ¿Cuál es lo más importante para tu vida? ¿Qué es convicción? ¿Qué es pagar el precio? ¿Qué es lo más importante para ti? Secondly, he not only had conviction, he had a confession. He had a man with dirty lips or immun lips. Yo soy un hombre con los labios impuros. Él reconocía su necesidad y su dependencia. He recognized that he needs something else. As long as we recognize that we need him every day that he we need his anointing and we need his power before we went to india we separate days and days and days of fasting and prayer and fasting and prayer and the holy spirit will tell us the devil is waiting for you over there the devil is waiting for you over there it's not like going to paris it's not like going to latin america they have a huge crusades that the devil in latin america don't, don't, don't even show up over there there's so much power in the crusade that they didn't, they didn't even show up there. But in these countries of the 1040 window, oh my friend, the devil is really at work over there. As sure as the Lord lives, the 1040 windows will be saved. These 61 countries, 2 billion and 600 million people that ever, ever heard the name of Jesus Christ before. Coca-Cola is more famous than the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord shall win. Hallelujah. El Señor ha de vencer. Y nosotros hemos de vencer con Él. Esos dos billones y seiscientos millones de gente que hay que no conoce al Señor. John Hyde was a great preacher. He was in his boat in 1903 going from England to India. Era un gran predicador, John Hyde. Y alguien vino con una carta, le dio una carta y le dijo, John, read this letter inside of your room and your boat. Lea esa carta dentro de tu cuarto. Y cuando John Hyde tomó la carta y abrió, he took the letter, he opened up the letter, it says, John, are you filled with the Holy Spirit to go to India? Estás lleno del Espíritu Santo para ir a India. John Hyde got mad and said, how come someone, how dare you to ask me this question? I am a great Presbyterian preacher. And he took the letter and he put it back to his pocket. So, great predicador presbyterian. And the first day in the boat, the Lord came to him and said, You are nothing. 
You can be a very intellectual preacher, but if you go to India like this, the devil will eat you. Se vas de esta manera, el diablo te va a comer en India. Primera noche, el peleó con Dios. First night, he fought against God. Second night, the Lord came to him and said, Or I change you, or I kill you. Because it's the same for me to kill you here, and then the, the, the Hindus to kill you there. O te cambio, o te mato. On the third day, John Hyde humiliated himself. He said, Lord, I need your help. And God baptized him in the power of the Holy Spirit at 3 a.m. Dios le bautizó en el poder de la unción del Espíritu Santo, John Hyde. When he got to India in 1906, in 1911, it started the first revival in India. Para 1911, el primer avivamiento, Jonathan Edwards. He was, uh, uh, Jonathan Edwards used to say that John Hyde was one of the most intellectual and most anointed preachers that he ever, ever come to know. And Jonathan Edwards was a great preacher, was a great man of God. The Holy Spirit is the one that makes the difference inside of a man. El Espíritu Santo es el que hace la diferencia adentro de un hombre. Cuando el avivamiento indiano empezó en 1911, when the revival started in 1911 by John Hyde, Jonathan got forth and his mission in Marichuria took the both, sit down, learn it, received the power of the Holy Spirit, went back to Marichuria and there was the first Chinese revival in 1921. India and in China, ignited by the power of the Holy Spirit because one man was filled with it. Si nosotros creemos que podemos hacer la obra de Dios por nosotros mismos, estamos equivocados. Si creemos que podemos ser por nuestra intelectualidad o por nuestra capacidad, estamos equivocados. There is a lot of laws going on against the Spanish people in America. Muchas leyes contra los, los hispanos, Congress and the Republicans, many of them are against the Spanish, they want to throw us out of here. Muchos están en contra y nos quieren echar afuera. Do you know why? Because the devil knows that the revival is coming from the Spanish churches in America. Porque el diablo sabe que el avivamiento está viniendo de la iglesia hispana en América. And do you know why? The Hispanic people and the black community is the one that is holding up the spiritual level in America. No more the whites. It's the blacks and the Spanish. They are holding up America. If the Spanish and the blacks were gone in America, the blacks will die. The, 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 the whites will die spiritually. Because most of the American churches, the, the white churches, are surviving because the Spanish people are renting their buildings. Which is absolutely true. When I see T.D. Jakes preaching, my friend, he is a great man of God. When I see some other blacks preaching, preaching, he's a man of God. Like Dr. Evie Hill, I had the honor to listen to Dr. Evie Hill in Amsterdam 83, the Billy Graham Conference. Dr. Evie Hill from Mount Zion Baptist Church in Los Angeles. Oh, this man is a preacher. He preached a message in the Billy Graham Conference in 83. He'll go back and preach, preach in the streets, preach in the airplane, preach in the boat, preach in the school, preach in the work, preach everywhere, wherever you go, you preach, 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 preach the gospel, my friend. One of the most anointing men of God of these days is Evie Hill in Los Angeles. He's not anymore the whites. We are taking over little by little. We are taking over the Spanish and the blacks are taking over the spiritual realms of America. I believe that they have their time. I believe that they were great missionaries. They, they send the missionaries everywhere. I believe that. Fine. We acknowledge that and we believe. But I think also that God has a time for us. Because the Spanish and the blacks have much in common. We were too long called third world countries. We were too long humiliated. And now the better wine, the new wine, he saved it for last. And we will bring revival to this nation through the power of the Holy Spirit. We shall do it. Nosotros lo haremos. Hallelujah. Tercer lugar, no solamente convicción o confesión, pero santificación el tuvo. Thirdly, not only conviction or confession, he had sanctification. He said that the angel touched his lips. Deja el Señor tocar tus labios. A man of God cannot be used if he lives a dirty life. Today or tomorrow, it will come up like Dean Swagger did. If we want to change this world, we must have a untouched 
untouchable moral clean life we must have an integrity that shows in the pulpit and outside of the pulpit because marriage and the matrimony is the passport to be here in the pulpit we cannot be preachers and live a double life and our children give a contrary to the testimony that we preach si queremos cambiar el mundo tenemos que ser hombres y mujeres diferentes y de un alto nivel de integridad y un alto nivel de sinceridad when I was in Montreal, Canada it was a great crusade listen to this very carefully when I went back to LA cuando yo regresé a Los Ángeles a Hispanic lady called me una mucha, un señor hispano me llamó y Leon, We are very glad that you had the opportunity to be here with us in Montreal. Estamos contentos que estuviste aquí con nosotros en Montreal. When you pray the prayer, the Lord healed my son. His left leg had cancer and the Lord healed him. Look, I, I didn't even know. And I said, well, give thanks to God because I have no power to heal nobody. So you give the thanks to him. Look what she says. We want to send you the tie, personally, my tie and my husband's tie and the tie of our company, which is thousands and thousands and thousands of Canadian dollars. We wanted to send to your ministry. Just listen to this. I wait her to finish. When she finished, I go. Dear lady, or your pastor did not taught you what tie is? Or you don't know. Or tu pastor no te enseñó, or tu no sabes. You cannot send to me your tithe. Tu no puedes enviar a mí tu diezmo. You cannot send the tithe of your company, even if thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars can endorse, as you say. Pienso que es miles y miles y miles de dólares. Why I cannot do that? No, you can't. Because the Bible didn't say you send it. The Bible said you bring to my church to the temple where you receive the word of God trae a mi iglesia al templo donde tú recibes la palabra de Dios you have to take your time and bring to you pastor where you eat the word of God because where you eat you pay you eat it. you don't eat in McDonald's and go paying in Burger King so if you eat in McDonald's you have to pay in McDonald's you cannot pay in Burger King That means, brother, that, that I cannot send you. No, you can't. But I have done to others. Others is others. I'm saving my soul. I'm not going to lose my soul just because the face of George Washington, one dollar bill. Then she goes, that's integrity, Dr. Didion. I say, oh, yes, it is. That's more than integrity. It's a love of my soul and my family. I'm not going to curse my children and my family. No voy a maldecir mi casa y no voy a maldecir mi familia. Do you know why? Because God can allow the devil to tempt you to see where your heart is. Because where your heart is, there will be your treasure will also be. My friend, let me tell you. One of the most needs that American preachers and, 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 and preachers in this nation all over the world needs is integrity in life. Integrity in their finances. Integrity in their, in their, in, in their matrimonial life. Integrity in their children's life. Integrity. If we want to be a man of one piece, we must be different. Si queremos ser un hombre de una pieza, tenemos que ser diferente. I remember when Catherine, she was six years of age. Catherine came up to me once and said, Daddy, when I grow up, I'm going to have a boyfriend. And I go, hey, 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 who told you about this? I saw mama's ring. And what she said? She said that he got married because she loves you. I said, yes, look here, I have a ring too. Then she goes, when I grow up, I'm going to have a boyfriend. She was five years and a half, almost six. I said, okay, but dad is praying for the Lord to come back before you have a boyfriend. <laughs> Now when I say this to her, she got mad. I said, that's not true. <laughs> And his name will be Joshua. I go, uh-huh, why? And he's going to have a short hair. Uh-huh. And he's going to preach like this. <laughs> uh-huh. Why all of that? 
Because daddy, I'm going to marry a man of God like you, daddy. Oh, my friend. A man of God. For the first time, Dr. Johnson, I realized when my daughter was six years of age that I had my children in my hand. I can control their health or I can put them up to heaven. I have them in my hands. The testimony that they are looking to you. The testimony that they are paying attention to your words. What you preach, what you do. Not only be a man of God in the pulpit and had great crusades. No. Many preachers have had crusades and their children are lost. Sus hijos están en el mundo y grandes cruzadas y sus hijos están perdidos. My friend, one of the greatest needs that we have is not only be successful in ministry, not only carry the word of God with power and anointing, but let's ask our children what they think what we are. Vamos a preguntar lo que ellos creen que nosotros somos. Sanctification is the bottom line of the ministry. The Lord has suffered too much with the scandals of the big preachers and big evangelists. Moral scandals, money scandals. The church has suffered. The gospel has suffered. God invested many, 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 many years to build a man of God. Like Dr. Martin Luther King says, great men of God, they are not done instantly. That take years to the Lord to build a man of God and take seconds for the devil to destroy him. Lleva años, dijo el doctor Martin Luther King, para Dios edificar a un hombre y lleva segundos para el diablo derrumbarlo. Sanctification in life. We shall not measure our success in ministry the way we conduct our ministry. We shall measure the, our success, how faithful we are to God. How faithful we are in our hotel room when no one is seeing what you are seeing. How faithful we are when we are alone. My wife tells me always, you travel 10 months alone all over the world. Because for two months, they travel with me. Catherine Jr., they travel all over the world with me. They are so small, Jr. is eight, and Catherine is 10, and they need only one more continent to know, Australia. They have traveled all over the world with me. They go free, I have so many miles. I have two million miles in Delta Airlines. Only two million. So you can travel for the next 16 years free. So they go free. I go to preach and they go on a vacation, but they are observing all the time. They're observing what we do, what we preach. Dominic go the other day, you travel 10 months alone. Are you faithful to me? Even your thoughts, I said, well, you ask to God since you, you have all this revelation and you can see devils and demons. So you ask to him and he will tell you. My friend, la mayor necesidad de la iglesia es sermos una pieza sola. Una pieza en la iglesia, una pieza en la casa. Tener los hijos en obediencia, tener los hijos en sujeción. Ser un ministro de una pieza sola. Exaltar al Señor en nuestras propias vidas. Y dejar que Él glorifique su vida en la nuestra. Y nosotros ser lo que somos. Un día terminó el culto. One day the service was over in a church. And the lady was cleaning up. Una hermana estaba limpiando la iglesia en 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 el guy came in and said, "This is a church, ma'am." Esa es una iglesia, and, and she said, "Yes, it is." And he said, "Well, where is the holy statues and that is hanging up down from the wall?" And uh, and she couldn't understand. She said, "Yeah, but it's a church." Pero dónde está los santos colgados de la pared? Y, y, y. And she said, "Well, it's a church." She said, "Well, it's a church, but I don't see the." Sands hanging down from the wall and, and the idols. Are you sure it's a church? And he goes again, Where is the sands? There should be over there hanging in the wall. And she said, Well, the sands is not hanging in the wall, sir. They are coming tomorrow night at 7 o'clock when the service starts. <laughs> We are a holy priesthood, hallelujah. We are a holy nation. We are bought to the blood of Jesus Christ to glorify Him to our lives. And when we go to fight the devil, if you're clean, if you live a holy life, the devil flee from you. You don't dare to go to India, to go to, to, to India uh, dirty, my friend. You're just going to go once. Because the devil is going to kill you over there. Oh, my friend. 
I have only one desire. Solo tengo un deseo. I have preached this gospel from all the way Alaska to Chile, from Philippines to Japan. I have been 80 times around the world. If only we had millions of dollars in our hands. I put Dr. Johnson over my head and his staff and our staff to give accountability to this man of God. And we shall go all over the world. I know, I know that someday he will bless us so much because he has trust us in thousands. I believe he will trust us in millions because if you are faithful in the little, he will put you as much. I know that the day is coming, hallelujah. He will test you for many years and he will test you and he will test you and he shall find you faithful and you are faithful. He shall trust you with millions. Oh, my friend, we shall win this world. Hemos de ganar este mundo y él ha de confiar a nosotros millones y millones de dólares. All these American churches, the white churches, they have big buildings and they have Ten people Sunday morning. They are gonna die someday, and their temples will be ours. Because their young people are in the world, and their old people are dying, and they are not winning souls no more. Those big temples of the whites, they will be in the hours. Those millions of dollars that they have, those millions of dollars that the Baptist church, some Baptist church that support the gays and lesbians, that this money will be ours. We will have millions of dollars in our hands to preach the gospel. And the Lord will give it to us, Pastor. They'll give it to you. They'll give it to me. They'll give it to the church. And they'll give it to the people that wish to win this world. Lo tendremos, aleluya. Si somos fieles en el poco, en el mucho, Él nos va a poner. Cuarto lugar, no solamente convicción, convicción. Confession or sanctification, but it took communion. Not only conviction, confession, and sanctification. He had intimacy with God. Fourthly, he had a fellowship communion. He said, I heard the word of the Lord. Why he couldn't hear it? Why he couldn't hear before? Because he didn't have a conviction. He didn't have a confession. He had a sanctification. When he had all those three, then he said, Then I hear the word of God. When you go during the night, hallelujah, that's everything silent. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love those who love me and those who seek me in the mornings shall find me. The 27, 28, 29, 30th and 31st of December. Holiday days, right? 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Día de vacaciones. Los niños estaban en la casa y damas estaban en la casa. The Lord came to me and said, you shut yourself inside of your room five days I know the kids are out of school and you can go to restaurants and have a nice time with them I want you to pay the price and prepare yourself what is going to come for 2001 I went to Damaris and said Damaris I will fast and pray for the last five days of the year so here is the credit card you go out and eat outside every day yes sir I'm going right now can you imagine? This is a dangerous thing to do. And I said, here it is. You can pay as much as you want to $20. Everything is yours. <laughs> because it's very hard for you to be fasting and she will be cooking. It's torture. So you just send them out and you stay alone. Oh, my friend. The Lord will use you the way you pay your price for him. If you sanctify your life, if you live a life and you pay the price that only few men or women can pay, if God used it in the past, these great men of God that he used it, that we read the books, the biography, why God cannot use us today? He is the same God. We have changed. He never changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We are the one that change. Even though we are in the age of internet and computer, He's still the same. He's still the same God of the Mount Sinai. When the glory of God came when Moses was there. God told me a long time ago, if you pay the price, if you sanctify your life, the nation shall be yours. 
And we had seen miracles upon miracles upon miracles. And we've seen miracles, tras miracles, tras miracles. Si solo certificas tu vida, dijo el Señor, tráncate y verás milagros como nunca has visto antes. If you want to be filled with the word of God, you must be empty from yourself. Tienes que estar vacío de ti mismo para estar lleno. If you want to give the honor and the glory to Him, He must leave every detail inside of you. During the day you think about Him, during the night you dream about Him. He's everything. He's the love of your life. He's everything. You cannot imagine to live without Him. And you preach the gospel everywhere you go. If it's a crusade, if it's an airplane, if it's a bus, you preach it. If it's one, if it's two, if it's ten thousand, fifty thousand. It's the drive that drives you. Conviction, confession, sanctification, and intimacy with Him. The greatest revelation will come. God speak to the church, but the greatest revelation will come when you are alone with Him. When you shut the door, and those. Those, those warm tears come down from your cheeks and you lift up your arms two, three, four in the morning you say God I can't go to India I say yeah you cannot but I can go through you you cannot but I can go through you you shall not fear man you shall fear me no debes temer al hombre tienes que temer a mí was a great challenge to our ministry, a grand desafio to raise up $50,000 in Latin ministry. My friend, let me tell you, if bigger is the challenge, if it's big, bigger is the God that we serve. Cuán grande es el desafío, cuán grande es Dios para darnos victoria y vivir una vida recta y una vida íntegra. If we live a life of intimacy and communion with Him, when challenge comes and trials and tribulations come, you will stand firm. Second century after Christ, in the second siglo después de Cristo, the emperor, emperor of Rome, brought a Christian guy, a Christian man, before his presence and told him, "You are a Christian, right?" And he said, yes, I am. And he said, I'm going to send you so far. You, you're going to be alone by yourself. Te lo voy a enviar lejos, estará solo, dijo el, el emperador al hombre cristiano. The Christian guy said, well, you can send me whatever you want. As far as the Roman boat can go, I go. But before I get there, you'll be there waiting for me. Then the emperor was furious. Say, I'm going to take everything you have. I'm going to leave you in misery. Te voy a tener, quitar todo lo que tú tienes. Te, estarás en la miseria. And the Christian guy goes, Well, my treasure is in heaven. It's too high for you. You cannot touch over there. Mi tesoro está en el cielo. Es demasiado alto para ti. Tú no puedes tocarlo. Then the pair said, I'm going to kill you, guards. Take your swords. Take his neck out. Cortale su cabeza. He said, you're going to kill me? Lo vas a matar. It's too bad. I'm dead for 40 years already. The life that I live, I live to the God. The Son of God that dies for me. I die for the world and the world is dead for me. Estoy muerto para el mundo y el mundo está muerto para mí. Oh, my friend. Si viviéramos vidas diferentes, vidas impactantes, vidas distintas. I have a dream to see my son someday. He's eight. He preached his little first sermon when he was five. He preached three minutes and a half and his gasoline was over. <laughs> three minutes. Joshua Jr. Then his second sermon, he preached about for 10 minutes. His third sermon, he preached in Norway, in Oslo. He preached to the children. He had a, he had a children meeting and he preached. He was seven years old. And three months ago, he turned eight and he preached to 380 kids. And the other day we were in Venezuela. They still had 67,000 people. Then there's 67,000 people in the state of Venezuela. Then I preached. When I preached, I went down to sit with, with the ministers. And he, he gave a hug to me. He put his hand over here. And he said, Daddy, 
when you grow old, I'm going to take your place. And I said, you wait a second now. I have a long way to go. And he looked to me, well, you're almost 40. That's all the American says, 40, you're just starting life. He thinks like, he's still a children, he thinks like a children. He said, I will grow up, but I'm going to put a little thing behind the book for me to step on it. He will grow up, but he needs the little thing, he thinks like a children. And I will preach like you. <laughs> One is Sunday morning, he's he stands before the mirror. So his amigo por la mañana se pone delante del espejo. And he put his hair exactly the side as me. His shoes is black as mine. He has the Bible exactly as mine. He goes, Daddy, I am a copy of you. <laughs> Soy una copia tuya. Yes, he is. And the other day, Catherine sang a song. And he preached it. And he got both in the van and he said, Catherine, we are already a team. You sing, I preach. <laughs> My children, what can I give to them if I don't have nothing? I can give my example. I can give my words. I have just a bunch of videos that support our ministry and our family. That's all that I got. Oh, but my grandfather preaches. My mother is a pastor in Brazil. We are already the fourth generation that preaches. Catherine Jr. is coming along. What do we have? We have our testimony. We have healings in our family. We have miracles of faith. We have so many things that he has grown to all. Tenemos lo más grande. Milagros de fe, de poder, de autoridad y de sanidad. Oh, my friend, let me tell you this. There is enough power here in Washington, D.C. to turn this city upside down. We had enough of lines of Bill Clinton. We have enough of adultery. We have enough of a man without character. It's enough. We need to restore this nation to its greatness, what it used to be. When Jonathan Edwards used to preach those powerful sermons, America used to shake in fear. What had happened to America? ¿Qué ha pasado con este país? ¿Qué ha perdido el temor? ¿Qué ha perdido la comunión con Dios? We still have preachers like John Hagee that preach the truth. They preach the truth like it is. No compromise with sin. We cannot please the devil and God at the same time. We have to have a stand and have a position. Or you're a man of God or you're a Coca-Cola. That's right. We must be able to suffer critics. We must be able to suffer criticism. Doesn't matter. We have to stand and live to the standard of this word of God. Yes, we have to preach like it is. Sing a sing. Pecado es pecado. That's it. Y quinto lugar, no solamente convicción, confección, santificación, comunión, el tubo, consagración. Fifthly, not only conviction, confession, sanctification, or intimacy, or communion, or fellowship. He had a great consecration. He consecrated his life. He said, here I am, Lord, send me. For us to say that, here I am, Lord, send me. We must have to be very mature to say that. In 1985, with open doors, Brother Hendry in other organizations in Europe, we smuggled 100,000 Bibles be be behind the Iron Curtain. 85, I was 22 years old. Oh, that was a long time ago. No, not too long, as of yesterday. We were young, we fear nothing, we have nothing to lose. We see the challenges as one more challenge, that's it. Because when you see God, how he, he, He's so big, your point of problem is just a minor thing for Him. When you see Him as a whole that created the heavens and the earth. When you pass through the airplane to other continents, you fear, you fear something right here. When you go to a street and your car goes like this, you feel something here. When you cross continents, you go to other realms of spirituality. 
you go all the realms that the devil dominates some countries you go something ah, right here and the Holy Spirit speak to you you are in dangerous land you are in very dangerous land you have to live bes- oh, under my anointing under my power you are in dangerous land in September we went to Colombia Colombia is very dangerous country they kidnapped pastors we had 130,000 people in our crusade. 70, 30,000 people, the pastor that invited us. He had-